this morning Got some gabagoo And then I woke up the next day and got some gabagoo Keep waking up and keep getting different types of gabagoo I even got some gabagoo from a Scooby-Doo Woke up this morning got myself a sub I believe Tony wanted a, a meatball sub I think Polly said that he wanted the ham and Swiss I think that Tony actually wanted the Scooby-Doo There are two different styles of rear seat bottoms. This one has a small cutout, this one has a deeper cutout, and it's more flat. And this one has a bit of a, a lip to it all the way around. So when you're ordering your upholstery, you want to make sure you get the right size or the right style for the early cars and the later cars. What year do they switch over? I don't know, 73 maybe. And for the top seats, it looks like they're mostly identical. The one difference that I'm spotting is these two brackets here and here are just holes on this side. But these are the cutouts right there. You can see the screws for the rear headrest attachment. This has the same cutouts here from the 1969 car and the 1974 car. So more or less the same top halves. And the, these four screws here are what attach the center armrest. I'm gonna need a staple, but looks like the hog rings and staples are the only thing keeping this upholstery on. I've worked my way around the perimeter. I got the staples out with this little guy, and then I'm working on the um, hog rings. Hog rings are easy enough to remove. You want to just grab and twist. Grab, twist, and it should come undone if it's attached to a metal backing. Too much of this. Et voila. Some of them are attached to the webbing, so I'm just gonna snip through them and then extract the halves separately without ripping the webbing too much. I'm guessing these rings here are pulling the upholstery to the front. So it looks like the tops are done in halves and this piece overlaps and connects the two of them very well. Metal ribs are attached with the VP setup in here. They're a little bit thinner than the original Volvo ones, but here's hoping. And we will be putting holes in the top for the headrests. It's real nice. Okay. All right, we got to get these guys out as well and they run through here. That'll be fun. Woke up this morning, got some gabagoo. And then I woke up the next day and got some gabagoo. Keep waking up, keep getting different types of gabagoo. Even got some gabagoo from a Scooby-Doo Woke up this morning, got myself a sub I believe Tony wanted a, a meatball sub I think Polly said that he wanted the ham and Swiss I think that Tony actually wanted the Scooby-Doo one side is just about done. I need to buy a stapler so I can do the top portion here. But for the side, we've got all the rings attached. It really helped to have this guy here because I could reference all of the folds in the upholstery. But I will encourage you to take pictures. You know, you want to know the number of hog rings. You want to know which layers fold first. And it looks like it's actually different a little bit. Uh, we'll see how tight this corner gets because it's pretty bulky here with the extra stuff. I don't want to cut anything, but I did have to cut the two lines you can see like right here to get that into place. It's a little nerve wracking to be like, ah, oh, fresh leather. So we have got um, a metal rod that runs through this side. You're going to be reusing your old one. You're also going to reuse the old rod that goes into here. This is really stretched, which is good for the fact that it won't have wrinkles, but it's 
understandable that this material fails over time. So like the old seat covers. That piece might be a little uh, subject to ripping if it tries to get reinstalled and not to mention all the inside pieces like all around the inner orange leather piece. That's all pretty much disintegrated too. That is the binding here that holds that horseshoe shaped metal. This metal piece inside of it. Okay. The other thing that's kind of weird how Volvo did this is the top. And why is that? Well, let me flip this over. This top piece endures a lot of stretch, a lot of stretch, because you can see the wood is here, the upholstery sits about here. There's that much of a gap that you need to compress with your hands and then staple into place. And this stitch is actually the stitch that sits right at the top edge here. And you can see that right there. It runs all along the top, which is a nice marker to know how far to stretch it but it really puts a lot of stress on that because this is just vinyl and it's under a lot of UV exposure. So all of that UV exposure is drying out the vinyl and this is what happens over time. So to correct that, I don't know, put in some rear sunshades or something, but yeah, it's a bit of a stretch and you're compressing all the springs to try to get this up to there. And I'm nervous because it's a strain on the corners. You see this corner here? It's already starting to rip a little bit. Maybe not, but it looks like it could. So you want to make sure when you pull, you never pull pressure on the corner. So you can pull, you know, here where it's flat stitched and it helps to really like move all these wrinkles out. But you don't want to do that. So to recap, now that one side is finished, you have the horseshoe in the middle. And I started by doing, I think the top hog rings then the sides, okay? And then from there, I can start unfolding the corners. And as I'm unfolding the corners, I'm stretching all the way across this uh, foam. And I did use steam on the foam because it helps revive a little bit of the volume, even if it's just temporary because foam compresses over time and the steam and the moisture helps to kind of like, ah, oh, let it expand just ever so slightly back into its original shape but you can see spots like this where it has been under compression for 40 or so years. But this foam is actually really good quality. I'm so impressed with Volvo. Now, keep in mind that on top of that is this uh, barrier. This is like a slip cover. It makes it really easy to have um, any sort of leather slip over by having this material. Otherwise, the foam gets really sticky. And all of this black here is, I think, water that got in and um, the dye from the leather has gone on to the foam. Okay, so, and then of course, these are the remnants here of the old white slip material from back in the day. So, as we're working our way out, this stitch here is also a good indicator of the edge, and it needs to run right about there. Um, not too much in the inside and not too much on the outside, just right on the corner. And the way that you know you've done that right, for reference, you can see here, it is the center point. It runs kind of evenly on either side of the armrest. So that's quite nice. Happy with that. And the same thing here. Compress, pull it over the edge. A lot of strain happens here, so don't pull here. And then this piece, it might staple. It's not really cut the same way here as it is here. So I might not have that, but I'm definitely gonna have these staples all along the bottom there. And we'll see if we get, yeah, we should get a little bit of this over the edge. Um, yeah, I think there was a couple staples on the old one too. So, you know, using the old staples as markers, like a good indicator of wear, but also the new cuts aren't exact with the old cuts uh, in terms of the, the edges that you don't see. So the old one might've come out an extra inch or so, if that makes sense. Um, so it's nice for me to mark where the old staples went, but it doesn't mean they have to go exactly where the old ones went. Like I'm doing with the hog rings, I'm marking where the hog rings went and installing the new ones in the exact same spot. All right, and then here we have our tubes for the rear headrest, and those are going to just protrude very nicely so I can make a precise cut 
around them and I don't have to worry about cutting too much material. And they also have these washers that will take up quite a bit more space than the hole I need to make. So that will cover anything. The washers have little teeth on them. You may not even have to worry about rear headrests because very few of the cars had this option, but you know, it's going pretty well. And the upholstery kit does have rear headrest material as well. So we'll get into that sooner or later. And then there's the center armrest and yeah, workspace got crowded fast, but I ordered a buffer as well. So I'll be working on polishing the aluminum. I've got my chemical guys that I'm gonna use on the vinyl, uh, the plastics and the vinyl. And I've also got a different chemical guys right there. They've got a leather conditioner which I'm about to try on the old leather insides to see if it helps rejuvenate some of that. Try to keep the old seats preserved as best as possible. That would be really nice because it's a shame to throw this kind of stuff away. There might be somebody out there who wants like a, a fun little cover to just do a, a quick rewrap on a back seat. It's not ripped. The front seats have one small rip, but um, this leather's definitely dry over all the years. So we'll see. Just have a look here, the way it wrinkles, as I talked about in the beginning of my first video. Those are some dry, dry wrinkles, and it's got a nice layer of Vaseline on it, but the backside looks good, huh? And over here's the side that I washed, it's still damp. Once it dries a little bit more, I will put a uh, healthy serving of the Chemical Guys lotion on there. And this is some of the dye that came out of the leather. I put, I put my uh, sponge or my brush right here for a second and a lot of that dye transfer came off. So it showed me how much black did come off. See a little bit of ripping right there? Stress. Gotta be careful with the stress points. Okay. And of course the whole uh, webbing here has disintegrated for the metal bow as we mentioned earlier. But cool. All right. It's getting dark, but Daylight Savings is back. Um, march forward an hour, which means sunset's now 7 p.m. instead of four, like it was in the dead of winter. Making progress. proved to be really tough to undo. Thankfully, a lot of the center hog rings, the material that it's attached to is ripping. So I could just rip it out. But, oh man, if you had to like try to extract one of these, it would just be so difficult because you cannot get to some of these hog rings with all of the springs underneath. It's just too hard to get your hands in there. Okay, so uh, there are some weird bows on this. This one goes through the foam and it probably is attached underneath here. And um, if you're redoing the foam, that could be very tricky because of the way it's layered in. So I'm gonna steam this, it's gonna come up a little bit, and I'm going to uh, feed this back through here. These are where the rings attach. There are holes in the bottom. So I should be able to start with this piece here. I think the new one's gonna have this already stitched in. I'll start with this one, start it in the middle, hog ring it around, and then I will be able to do this one here. And then I'm gonna move Onward to this side, ring it in, boom, boom, boom. Okay, so if we do it sequentially like that, it should give us access to do all the hog rings from the top because getting in from the bottom, no can do. It's also better to do it from the top because when you attach, when you've got one of these and you crimp them with one of these, you end up more or less with the teeth kind of sticking out on the side um, like that. It's a little bit, topsy-turvy here, but 
uh, essentially it would be together. But these sharp teeth, these points, you don't want them poking into the leather. So if you have the points like this, you want to apply the tool like this, meaning from the top down. So if I get them from the bottom, I could get them, but it, it could snag a little bit of the leather if it's too tight. There's a lot of layer of foam in this stuff, this felt or jute, jute. And um, I wonder if it's made from horse hair or this is just like some weird fibers. But the uh, foam is going to go on top as well. Not the foam, but the uh, that white sheet, that slip cover material. And so I thought this was going to be the easy one. first sound on this. Is it me going, ah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's good, it's good. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is too bulky to sit at the front, but we can get a little bit tighter. I asked last night, 1.30 was when I sent my email. Yeah. With my budget update, mm -hmm. which took, you know, it's amazing how like I'll spend Six hours. Yeah. Adding up numbers from all of my bookkeeping and formulating what was estimated with what was the actual splits between the two cars. And yeah. then at the end of it, I present like six lines of numbers. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, it looks so simple to just be like, I could have typed anything, but I've really, but you really gotta like, there. yeah, vet those numbers. Yeah. Oh, it's God. just, you know, it's funny because you don't see the work sometimes. Mm -hmm. But I presented it in a very like clear way, and I was like, "Here's where we're at." Yeah. It's still not far enough. I need this to go back more. Um, and I'm gonna do a third round here. Um, I'm just gonna be careful not to in my eye. Yeah, yeah. So, <sighs> I've so had that happen before. That's why I wear these. Oh my not god. Not in my eye. I actually hit the cheekbone. Okay. And it was a. It was one of these. Holy! Of course, yeah. it's got to be like the sharpest. the sharpest thing that you own. I was upside down on a car door. And mm hmm slipped and it just got me right in the cheekbone and I dropped it and I walked away and I said And you're like, I need to take I said, thank you Jesus, I'm done Thank you, I'm done I was done. actually volunteering for a Christian children's home <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, hey, volunteering is the death of me? <laughs> They're like, I can never do this again I mean, is that the best way to go or is that the biggest irony? Oh my god But it's like, like if I'm on stage with a friend and I know that she has this like bomb ass old woman character from the south and the suggestion was like, um, Blanche Dubois, but it's Canada, 1990. Yeah, yeah that people, people love throwing that out, and it's like it's overdone. What? That suggestion. Canada. What you just said. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh God. I have a skill. Yeah. I'm highly trained set of skills. Oh, <laughs> But just a thing where you're like, or you know that your friend has like very specific information. Like my, my last- <laughs> This is still the Liam Neeson bit. <laughs> what? <laughs> this is very specific information by the whereabouts of my daughter. <laughs> Who are you? What have you done with my son? Uh, I know, um, it's his daughter. Like, okay, um, so this is looking pretty all right. Ooh, okay. <laughs> nice. 
<laughs> just gotta do the inside here, and then it's armrest time, which should be easy. I mean, this looks like it was the hardest part of the whole situation. Honestly, the bottom seat was the worst. Yeah. This was a joy because it's two separate halves. Yeah. So I'm not like folding the whole thing and trying to stretch it. Be like, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's good here, but then all of a sudden I gotta go back to here. Mm -hmm. And this is where I started. So it's not two steps forward, one back. This is so good. And this is the last bit here. I don't know anything about stuff, but it looks it's so great. It's literally just hog rings and staples. That's everything. Listen, Aurora. craftsmanship. It's beautiful. Mm, no notes. <gasps> what? <laughs> Can you even? Gucci could never. <laughs> Also, your head is like 12 times the size. <laughs> Super tall. That's not, that's good. Can that's, you breathe? That's good leather. <laughs> All right, here we have a shop vac and plastic on that because what's been happening is, well, right here, the sides. Yeah, I mean, we were cracking some good jokes and it just split both sides right here. Look at that. Oof. We don't want that happening to the new one, so it's gonna. It's already threatening to do that. And we will try to shrink the foam with a vacuum the same way you can compress a bag you put into storage. And if it works, we'll be able to just slip the cover on. <laughs> Saying it out loud feels so dumb. <laughs> oh God. All right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, let's see, did it work? Where to start? No need to ask, he's a smooth operator. Right. The rear headrest. This is kind of what it looks like when it's all together. And it sits on the seat with these. There's a little bit of a rubber or plastic ring. Keeps that from falling off. And then this piece. These two here connect and they do meet in the middle. See, they mesh a little bit right there. And it seems like with the nut shape on that side and the nut here, that when you have them together, you can twist one over the other and it should expand. You see there's a nut inside there. It should expand on that nut. And perhaps that opens it up a little bit more to allow this to get tighter so that the headrest doesn't flop around on you. Okay. There's also a rubber ring here. And um, yeah, a couple of little bits and pieces. It's pressed into the sides. You see that's all one piece there. And they just sort of smush into here and right down the way it's a solid steel hole okay so I'm thinking um, we'll reassemble it and if it needs an adjustment I can do the adjustment at the end the new covers have the zipper they don't have the holes cut in the side so I'm gonna have to be doing that should be pretty straightforward with this and uh, to remove this left and right piece I was just pulling them apart and then it reaches a point, sometimes it'll get a little stucky. And you could just kind of wiggle it out. Oh, this one wasn't too bad. There's the rubber ring. Okay, cool. Nice. Um, I don't want to mix them up, so I'll put that back in for now. And on the other end, if it's really hard, I would just try to like, then um, you could do this and kind of do a bit of a hammered tapping motion. That's the extraction. But like I say, I'm going to leave one intact so I could do the other side. And they both come with these from the VP kit, which has a number on it here. Neck brace for back seat, 164, 384, 890. Okay, so what with this? Feels like it's glued down this piece. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Hard foam and a soft foam on top. 
Check that out. Is this symmetrical? Like, does that mean if we installed it this way, it would still work? And it sure looks like it. I'm gonna steam this and bring a little bit of life back to it. And then um, we'll use the sock to slip it over and it acts as, of course, the old paper. That's all there is to it, folks. for the top seats has these really cool three clips here 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 and those are on the inside so I'm gonna pull this bar out this is the back side of the seat and I'll pull out the bar and I'll attach the three plastic clips and if you don't have the three plastic clips you might just have to swing in some hog ring pliers but um, you can see this one is upside down from the other two so it kind of keeps it all centered there and that's it that's all that's gonna hold down the seat and then as it gets tucked in nice and tight we'll have the um, stitching all set settled in place and then I will stick the two ends inside of the small small channel right here this channel had two bars that went inside of it and the two bars you saw me pull them out in the time lapse one thin and one thick the thick one was here on the back side the thin one was on the front side and I think what you're going to want to do is go with the thick one first and then slide the thin one in boom and then at the end you'll put in the net the net has these little clips that are so grabby that you have to kind of pry them out. So they really hold themselves in place there. The good thing about the net is you can service most of it, I think, uh, with the clips in place, um, or at least change the elastic out from the top. Um, but then the clip sits inside of the seat here. And so what you would do is you put the net in upside down fill it into these two holes and then flip it over, bada boom. That helps to secure these two holes because the bend's in this metal here. Okay, steam is going. Let us revive this foam ever so slightly there. You see with leather, you can pull on it pretty hard and it won't rip, but vinyl, especially here on the sides where it's hole punched, Gotta be careful as I'm stretching it over. Normally I would unroll the seat cover over the foam, you know, starting from the top, but those are the ones that are typically stitched all the way down the sides. And um, this isn't the case. So we're just gonna try to slip it over using the little cotton slips here. And that should be a fair amount of tugging. But once it's all there, it should be nice and pretty. And I'm gonna be able to fit my hands up the back here and get those three clips installed as well as um, I don't have to worry about putting those rods in, those metal bars, because this has a very thick welt uh, plastic that's been stitched all along the bottom. So these are actually just going to be force-fed into the channel that sits at the bottom of the seat here. All right. Wishing me luck. Wishes me luck. <laughs>
Boy, those wrinkles in the top, there's really not much that can be done about that because it's really only held there, there, and there. So the rest is all just stretched over. Anyway, uh, should age nicely though. Look at the old stuff here. You can see it's looking pretty okay. Mm -hmm. Let's get that taken care of and then we'll have the one front seat done. Also, earlier cars look like this cushion's too small. It looks like it's shrunk a little bit in the middle and these sides have pulled up. Interesting, because I thought it was just, they were old, but then I looked at some of the catalog photos from brochures back in the day and they very much look like the seat kind of just bananas into your lap. <laughs> This would be the simple one, but it actually ends up looking to be the most complicated. I think this is a seatbelt buzzer. Sounds like it. Um, there's four wires, though. I think. Oh, that's looped. Never mind. Yeah, I don't know why it has to be so long of a circuit, but maybe they're controlling the amperage in a way to this little guy without having a resistor in place. Ah, who knows? All right. Um, this big horseshoe of foam. Yeah, it's not really held together with much, but there's a lot of ribbing inside. So from the bottom side, you got this flap. The flap had a rib um, here, here, here. The one that goes this way also attaches to this portion. And there's a second one here. So that's already five, six, seven, eight. So it looks like these three inner ones will pull through the material and that'll sink the middle section, which is like that, and hold it down. And then the um, others wrap around and they all bop, 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 attach to each other because it really is just a foam piece, not much to it. First I thought it was a seat heater because it's a similar looking design, but now nah, they didn't have those then. Although if you wanted to add one, man, this might be the time to do it. Not too much to retrofit though. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine ribs. Wow.
connecting details here. Uh, there's a little bit of a tab on this side and here on this side. And these two guys are teeth that will hold this upholstery together. You've got this hole here as a bit of a marker for where to stretch the material. So what I've done is taken my screwdriver underneath, tapped it with a hammer so that they could be raised just a little bit. And then you'll tuck the material in. It should look like this about when it's finished. Now they're not completely closed here and that's okay because there's a plastic trim piece that covers it, but it's enough so that it marks the hole where it should be. This one I use a hole punch and this one is the lumbar adjustment which has its own little retainer washer. So it looks like the whole seat side needs to go that way a little bit. So what I'll do is start with this bottom one on the right, go a little bit past where I need it to be and then feed it into the tooth. And it's a little too short, so it needs to go further. Let's go a little further with the upholstery. Grab that tooth, bada boom, looking pretty good. The other side here is a little extra material. Yeah, nothing's perfect, so let's pull it down and over. Grab that tooth. Nope, too close to the edge. Push it down onto the tooth. It'll find a spot to grab. Okay, I think this one needs to get bent up a little bit more. I should give it some good bite. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Come on now. There we go. All right. A little bit of extra material here, but like I say, it gets covered. So from there, I'm going to tap the teeth down. Got my half inch hole punch, the second hole. It's, there's a dummy hole here, but it's right up there. It's always a little nerve wracking when you're putting holes in material like this because you want to make sure you get it right. There's not a lot of room for error. The trouble I had with the previous side, or the, yeah, the passenger side seat, this material keeps coming out of the hole, that net that goes around the foam. And I want to be very careful to cut around it without starting to pull it out. Because if I start pulling it out, it'll start grabbing from the entire side of the seat and from the front, and then it can create some awkward wrinkles in there too. So we just want to do a clean extraction here to a point where it won't catch the threads on our screw. Because that will also start to pull the material. Kind of like a haircut where you're doing the final trimmings. And there's our two holes. This side has no need for a lumbar screw. We've already got the net on the back. So the seat is ready to go back on the frame. And because this is the side without the lumbar, it will have this piece here on the bottom covering it all up. It'll look pretty nice. It's a bit more forgiving.